and welcome to theCUBE's presentation of Women in Tech's global event, celebrating International Women's Day. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE here in Palo Alto, California, and we have a great remote guest calling in, coming in from Bahrain in the Middle East, Kalther Alagaf, General Manager of 973 Labs. Uh, thanks for coming in and, and being part of theCUBE, uh, our International Women's Day. You can't get any more international than Bahrain. Thank you for coming on. It's my great pleasure and honor to be here, John. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, I'm super excited to chat with you because in our two visits with theCUBE in Bahrain for covering this AWS Summit there uh, in the past few years, we noticed a, a surge in entrepreneurship. Um, it's almost as if the region of AWS has created this revitalization and energy and vitality and, and momentum around entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Can you share Absolutely. what's the, the, the scene down there? What's, the, what's it like? Well, uh, when it comes to my country, uh, we're lucky to have um, a small uh, population. It's not that large, but uh, we have so many creative people who's eager to uh, try the entrepreneurial journey and having Amazon uh, as a data center in Bahrain is a privilege and they are pushing uh, to have uh, more entrepreneurial ideas and innovation and solutions uh, within the ecosystem of Bahrain. So definitely uh, with their support, uh, I, can, I can see that so many youth, they are eager to uh, come in and contribute. I noticed that you're also the general manager of um, 973 Labs, but also the founder of a company. So you got two things going on here. You got the entrepreneurial thing happening. Um, this seems to be normal. People got a, a entrepreneurial activity and a job doing both. They're both entrepreneurial. Is that normal? Yes, absolutely. Well, I started my entrepreneurial journey back in uh, four years and I've been appointed as a general manager of 973 Labs, which is I'm leading on digital innovation. So that complements my passion of being an entrepreneur. And while we can uh, acquire talented people and support them to create their own solutions uh, the best way they can. So basically uh, following the uh, main pillars of the lab that I'm working on, which is uh, conducting a proper research and data analytics, innovation and sustainability. So uh, for my two founded companies, it's not only one, uh, I've worked in FinTech and also in PropTech as well. What inspired you to be an entrepreneur in technology? Well, um, I, I would say that uh, my inspiration was to think outside the box and I see problems and gaps as an opportunity. So that helps me to figure out and come up with solution that can be beneficial for everyone. So uh, analyzing data as well is something that I would really love. And also um, enhancing my skills and being more creative is my inspiration. I know this is a lot of entrepreneurial activity in Bahrain. A lot of investors are now coming into the market. Um, what are some of the things that are going on there? Can you share what the entrepreneurial scene is like there? What people are working on? Has cloud computing accelerated that? What's, what are some of the things happening on, there on the ground? Um, I would say that there is multiple competitions or hackathons run by multiple financial institutions. Uh, and also um, um, there are so many NGOs as I am a board member in Technology and Business Society and also a member of Women Empowerment in the field of tech. We are trying to motivate and accelerate the uh, desire to be uh, within this ecosystem of entrepreneurial journey. So basically uh, we have the Supreme Council of Women who's pushing as well women and ladies to be in this uh, sector uh, from early age, from uh, uni university or even high school graduates that they should start on working on their ideas and come up with solutions. So you can see that everyone is up to uh, uh, being part of the ecosystem by putting in their ideas. Yeah, and the government wants to be digitally completely transformed in by Cloud. a certain yes. date. They're, they're pushing it hard too. Absolutely, yes. We have the governmental sector trying to migrate from legacy infrastructure to the cloud, I would say. Uh, and it's, it's more uh, efficient for government and also to the private sector as well. You know, one of the things that jumped out at me when I was in Bahrain visiting was there was a lunch uh, or I'm sorry, a breakfast uh, for women in tech 
and I went there because I always go to go to those lunch breakfasts because I really want to see and meet people. I had to get kicked out because there wasn't enough table space, so I was <laughs> for all the people that were there. Because um, I was a guy, there was a spot for women. It was sold out. It was a line to wait, line to get in. So there's a huge interest of women in tech. I saw that firsthand. There are more and more people want to come in. So motivating women to consider a career in tech is really a, um, the focus. What steps do you see to, to make that happen? How do we take that to the next level? What's your view on motivating women to get into tech? How would you talk about that? Well, uh, absolutely. I think it's really uh, crucial to have a woman contribution within uh, the field of tech. But I believe there are some challenges uh, given our cultural norms of how men uh, perceive women working in the field of tech. Sometimes society burden women from you know, pursuing her passion to be in tech because it's a demanding field. I would say that it's uh, equal to the med medical field. You have to keep on updating and to be aware about what's going on. Um, so basically that might create a bit of a burden for specifically married women of uh, looking after a husband or their families. So I think uh, this is one of the challenges, but the steps to overcome those challenge, challenges is by uh, you know, trying to shift and change the way uh, the society think about where women should position herself and what kind of job should she should be in. Uh, so I think the other thing is by having educational curriculum that be taught in schools, teaching uh, both genders about the importance of uh, how we are equal and how we can complement uh, each other in that field because the future is in technology. So uh, young generations should understand this very well. How is the women in um, entrepreneurship going? Are they being financed? Are there ventures um, out there? What's the, what's, the, what's the momentum and progress on women starting ventures? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, we're lucky to have our first lady, the wife uh, of the king, uh, who's heading the Supreme Council of Women, who is pushing uh, women to create their own businesses or to come uh, to become an entrepreneur. Also, we have financing coming through the government uh, with an entity called Tim Keen, who provide different uh, plans and support uh, all through not financials only, but it, it covers other areas of businesses as well. So financing is not a problem. Again, for an entrepreneur, uh, uh, a woman as an entrepreneur, you can always seek multiple options for financing, not necessarily inside, it can be international as well. So a lot of good capital there. Also there's fellowship opportunities. I noticed you were a Halcyon uh, fellow, you had a fellowship with the Halcyon organization. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, that experience. Well, um, I really loved the experience. We started in Feb last year and we flew to Washington in July and we've met with Amazon people who were really supportive. We got a uh, solution architect supporting us of how to build uh, the solution that we want to deliver. And I got my CTO to get trained by uh, Amazon as well. So we found uh, so much value in the courses and the mentorship they provided. Uh, and um, I'm really glad to be part of that family. And um, their CEO, she said, now uh, and for a lifetime, you are a part of our family. And you know, it's all the support that we needed to, to get. It's a great community. What advice would you give to people who are out there who want to learn and, and get into cloud computing and, and take that step towards creating value, whether it's entrepreneurial or within a company? What's the secret formula that you would say are secrets to success? Absolutely, I think a cloud is a, a, is a massive and it's a brilliant opportunity for any technology to be built on. Uh, myself, I believe in the cloud, most or all of my solutions is built on cloud. And now even me leading the uh, digital lab, I'm building infrastructure on cloud. And basically it will give you more room uh, to identify more gaps, you do assessment, you can utilize the tools that is within cloud, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, you call it. So you can seize the opportunity to the maximum and you can scale faster. So basically you're not uh, limited to your uh, country. You can go across countries as well, uh, utilizing cloud. Catherine, talk about what's next for you. What's the next step? 
Well, uh, the next step um, in my new role or new job uh, leading on uh, digital innovation in 973 Labs is to finalize my strategy and also to acquire talented young people and, uh, you know, go through a program which is I designed uh, where they get the mentorship, the support till they get a final product that will be invested in and they can guarantee themselves a career. Uh, within the digital lab that uh, I'm trying to lead on. Uh, and I think um, the projects that will be covering not specifically only in FinTech, it could be in any other industry. So uh, we're trying to follow the recent trends, uh, thanks to Amazon and Google and the other uh, companies that we can uh, extract data and create our own reporting. So to uh, come up where we should be investing our time. That's great. I want to ask you about the demographics of, of the folks in Bahrain. I noticed that there are very, a lot of young entrepreneurs coming up and a lot of them. Um, is that true? Yes, uh, in, uh, in our population, the majority are youth. Uh, and I would say um, uh, the average age is in thirties um, till 35 or 36. So um, relatively we have so many young people or youth was eager to learn, but again, we need the, ex the expertise. We need older people to also mentor and coach the young generation of how they should calculate the risk and uh, come up with a proper business models and uh, brilliant ideas. Well, I'm very impressed with the folks down there. I said before the pandemic, unfortunately the pandemic hit, but we really wanted to have a CUBE location there. A lot of vitality, a lot of action, a lot of good stuff going on, certainly with the AWS region in, the, in there. Uh, and it's really created a lot of value. And so uh, we're looking forward to hearing more. And uh, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us. And for the folks out there watching, what advice would you give to women who are watching around the world around entrepreneurship, what's going on from your experience? What should we be doing and talking about? What's the story? Obviously this theme is bias, uh, inherent bias in, in, in the culture. Um, what would you share as your thoughts on to the world? Well, I think the only advice I can give to all of the women uh, out there, just try something new, try to solve a problem. There are so many gaps we have around us. Look around you, just take one step forward and try it. At least once in your life, you can come up with a brilliant uh, solution that serves all humankind, not only the people of your country. So uh, even if the road is bumpy, just be, uh, have the courage, be resilient and go for it. And we're all connected on the internet. So of course we can communicate with each other and have a good time and, and grow the community. Thanks so much, Kathar, for coming on theCUBE and celebrating International Women's Day with us as part of our special presentation. Thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, this is theCUBE's presentation of Women in Tech's global event, celebrating International Women's Day. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.